So each night on The National, we answer your questions on the coronavirus pandemic. Tonight's focus, the decline in global carbon emissions we told you about before the break. Earlier today, I spoke with our science correspondent, Bob McDonald, to better understand the true impact on climate change. So, Bob, I think all of Canada appreciates it when uh, you can cut through the studies and, and get us to the bottom line. So we have a few <laughs> waiting for you here. Yes, let's let the so, science uh, stand in the forefront here, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first question is, a, a steep drop in global emissions last month, maybe a, a 7% decline for all of this year. One viewer has asked us, will Arctic ice, glaciers, and permafrost refreeze because of this reduction in emissions? Uh, not in the short term, and for two reasons. Uh, one is that the carbon dioxide we've already put into the atmosphere will remain in the atmosphere for decades, if not a century. So the warming effect that we're seeing now is going to continue for a long time. It takes a while for carbon dioxide to be absorbed by the oceans or turned into minerals. So it's, it'll be a while before that happens. The other reason is because there are what are called feedback loops happening in the Arctic. When the ice disappears, it exposes dark seawater and dark land. White ice normally reflects sunlight back up into space and keeps us cool. Dark water and dark land absorbs light and turns it into heat. So the water's getting warmer, which will affect ocean currents. And when the land gets warmer, permafrost melts and all of the organic material that's been frozen there for thousands of years, uh, grasses, shrubs, woolly mammoths, that stuff is exposed, it rots, and then it gives off methane, which is another greenhouse gas even more potent than carbon dioxide. So that's adding to the warming as well. So it'll be a while before the Arctic stops that warming trend and before we start seeing ice growing up there again. But there is this, this pause of sorts caused by the pandemic. And one viewer wants to know, is that pause buying us more time to slow climate change? Well, this pause is an opportunity to look at ourselves and the impact of our technology. You know, those clean air pictures that you were showing earlier are kind of misleading because that smog is produced by gases that come out of tailpipes or the smokestacks of coal-fired generating stations, and they mix with water in the air and make little particles that we can actually see. So when we stopped moving, driving cars around and when power demands went down, that chemical reaction stopped and all those particles just dropped out of the sky and the air went clear. And it makes it look like, wow, we solved the problem. We can have a blast. But in fact, we're still producing carbon dioxide and methane. And we're going to wrap that back up when uh, the economy comes back on. So those invisible gases are still there. This is time to look at how dirty our technology is when we see how clean it gets when we stop and to think about where we go from here. Well, this one along those lines, this one's a little bit different. Uh, we heard a bit about it earlier. Do you think climate change will cause more pandemics? Well, there's a couple of reasons that that is a possibility. As you already heard, there's loss of habitat. We hear about the destruction of the rainforests in Brazil, in Indonesia, and also the wildfires that have been raging through Australia and, and Western North America. As we destroy habitat, as we get into habitat, there's more crossover between species and them and us. Now, at the same time, as the Earth warms, the climate zones, you know, we have the tropics around the middle, then you have the temperate zones, then you have the Arctic. Those zones are all going to move north so that diseases and viruses that would normally only survive in warm climates can now survive further north because of longer summers, so we are exposed to them more. And you combine all of that with international air travel when it comes back, and it'll be pretty easy for viruses to get around. So it would be foolish for us to think that this is the last pandemic. I keep looking for a silver lining here. It's getting hard. Um, one last question here is, if you look at the way we've responded globally to COVID-19, what does this tell you about the possibility for a global response to climate change? Well, here's your silver lining, Adrian. 
we have seen how we can throw enormous resources, trillions of dollars, at a single problem and how society can respond to that. So let's do the same now for climate change. Let's take resources and put them into cleaner technology. For example, if we all go to electric cars, we're going to need new batteries. The current batteries are really expensive because they're made of rare earth metals. How long can that last? So we need cheap batteries that are made of lightweight material that can charge quickly, and that's one area where we need to research. We need a better ways to store energy. Maybe we're going to go to hydrogen. I don't know. Uh, there's small nuclear. There are little nuclear power plants that are about the size of an office desk, the kind of thing that are in nuclear submarines, nuclear aircraft carriers that are completely safe. But they could be buried underground and power small towns instead of the big mega plants that we have today. And maybe we can put research into other ways to get energy out of oil instead of just setting fire to it the way we do now. So let's put our resources towards supporting existing green technology so it's all available to us and we can put solar panels on our roofs and give this challenge to young scientists in our colleges and universities so they can develop new technologies, things we haven't dreamed of yet, bring them to the forefront, not just on the fringes, and really get on with living in a sustainable way in the future. I believe we can do that. All right, so much potential ahead. As always, Bob, thank you for your help tonight and keeping us all informed. Thank you very much, Adrian.